It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. Happy Monday and thanks for choosing to start the week off with us. Now it's time for Monday relationship talk and uh, it's focused on a very, very particular topic, adoption. The process of which, while very positive, can also be very challenging and very emotional. Now it's an option that's becoming more and more attractive to couples of the same sex or single parents. And once the process is successful, and the child is now in their new home, there is a lot for parents to consider when it comes to raising them. That's right. Well, this morning we are asking the question, are you perhaps going through the adoption process or thinking of doing so? Are you raising an adopted child? Those are the questions we're asking because we have our relationship expert, Dr. Eve, in the building. She's here to help us navigate this discussion. And of course, our lines are open, so feel free to call us. That number is 21 Four three zero nine double eight one. We would love to hear from you if you have a comment or a question regarding our topic today. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Hi. Even As always, I'm sure that you bring us statistics yes. aplenty from the social yes. media sphere. Yeah, I mean, this is really good research, eh? <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. It really is Silent the most honest you'll research. get, I guess. You think so? <laughs> All right. So this is the poll that I posted um, yesterday. I uh, said we're talking about adoption. Mm. Do you think it's okay for single people and LGBTI people to adopt? LGBTI is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or intersex. 76% uh, of people said yes, 15 said no, and 9% said they were unsure. Yeah. So that's like overwhelmingly progressive and positive thinking that adoption is and can be and should be for everybody. Yeah, depicting it's, hopefully the society that we are living in that's more... It's more, more open and more progressive. Yeah, I'm only hoping that they would also be more tolerant of it in the reality. Yes, because we true. also have interracial and interfaith and intercultural adoptions that happen in our country all over the world as well. Yeah. I think, you know, what's really fabulous is that families have changed. I mean, there's always been adoption, but now it is way more open, especially in our country with the constitution that's so progressive that says anyone can adopt. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's a very rigorous process that people have to go through before an adoption actually happens. Yeah. I was actually yes. going to ask you, Dr. Eve, like, how long can a process take? Like, how, how tedious is the oh, process goodness. of so adoption? It's very tedious, can take over a year. So you have a choice in our country, either go through a private adoption, which is expensive, or else you go through the state, which is very laborious. The fact is it has to be. Mm -hmm. We really have yeah. to be checked out to yeah. see if you're okay to be adopting because what the law says is that the child's care is the number one factor. Yeah. So there has to be good checks put into place to do it. Uh, you know, the, the one that kind of gets to me is single parenting and here you're adopting and I think it's an incredible thing because it's showing us there are new structures. There are new ways of raising families. Mm -hmm. There are new diff they're different forms. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kat, go yeah. ahead. Could we maybe start and take it a step back before yes, you've even do that. had a chance to go through the process and perhaps mm -hmm. be successful in that process? What do you need to consider whether it is yeah. from a single parenting point of view, yeah. a same-sex couple point mm. of view, a heterosexual couple, whichever kind of mm. structure? What mm. needs to be considered and what do you need to talk about? Yeah, so obviously, <coughs> not obviously, many couples will try and get through IVF or find that they're very disappointed because they're not able to have a child in the kind of natural way. And like, what is a natural way? IVF is becoming more and more popular. Surrogacy is becoming more and more popular. And if those things don't work or you can't afford to do them, then what you're going to do is you're going to reach out and you want to then adopt. Mm -hmm. So there is an urge. There are many people who do want to have children who just can't have them on their own. And also people who really want to take in other kids yeah. because they have, there's an empathy around it. The other part of the, uh, people who are adopting are step families. So you and I get married and um, I've got children that I bring into this relationship and you say, I really want to adopt these children. You're going to go through the same rigorous process as if you're adopting somebody from a different you know, family, completely, completely. Yeah, from a different family, from a different birth mother. So those are also very important. I think the thing that one has to consider, as I'm saying, is the importance of the child. You know, why is it? that the child needs to be so well considered. Yeah. We know that the child needs to feel I have a sense of identity mm. within this new family. And that's like the most important thing. How do we create that sense of identity? So to come to your original question, how is it wise that people, what do you need to consider before mm. you're going mm. to adopt? As you go through the process, you will be checked out in terms of finances, your psychological health, your own relationship with each other, your actual living space that you're, you're living in, is it a good enough environment for a child to be in? 
And a lot of focus is put onto that relationship, which I think is really vital. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. We're going to take a pause at that very Let's moment pause. there, but we'll keep our lines open. 021430 Give us a call with your questions or comments. We're asking and talking all about adoption. It's my feel good work show. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show on a Monday morning. Dr. Eve in the hot seat and we're Hi. talking about a very important topic, uh, relationship talk today. Yeah. It's all about adoption and uh, our lines are open. 21 Shane is joining us on the line yes. from Port Elizabeth. Good morning, Shane. Hi there. Hi, Thanks Hi. so much for your call. What's your question or comment? Um, my question, um, it's not a question, I'm actually, I'm actually adopted myself, um, mm. but I was born 50, at 15 days old, my mother adopted me, and, and my mother's white, I'm of color obviously, but the experience was really, my mother told me from the start that mm. I am adopted, and she never, it wasn't something that was hidden from me or anything yeah. mm -hmm. and it was really uh, empowering it empowered me to discover who i am mm -hmm. in a way where i'm not i wasn't given up there's reasons why you are given up for adoption and all that stuff but yeah it was a really good experience and i did meet my mother this year mm -hmm. you met and your birth you mother yes. shay excuse you? you met your birth mother for the first time this year you said Yes, I've been with my biological mother for the first time this year, and I'm 20 now. And what was that experience like for you? <laughs> yes. It was okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, I'm sure it was fraught with a lot of emotions, Shane. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah. a very important thing uh, that we were highlighting during the break, Dr. Eve, yes. the fact that Shane's adopted mother mm. let her know from exactly. as early as possible exactly. that she okay. was adopted. Yes. Um, but then Zoe, you, you were asking about yes. what's the right way to do that, to go about yes. that? Yes. Yeah. So from beginning, when you get the child, you should start using the word adoption in obviously a very positive way, yes. a very affirming way, so that it becomes part of the language of the family, the culture of the family, that it's not something which is new. It's suddenly like, here, yeah, adoption, the word is suddenly foreign and thrown into the child. It? Yeah, so you use the word all the time because the most important thing is to solidify and concretize the child and their identity. And their identity is that they are your child, they're part mm -hmm. of your family. They also come from a different mother. There is a birth mother and you want to let them know that. So what the, the literature suggests or research suggests is that you want to let that child begin to know by the age of around two that there are different kinds of families and start exposing them to the fact that they are born in exactly the same way as every other child, but they were born to a different mother and to a different father, and now they are your child. You, you want to keep emphasizing they are your child and that they are part of your family. And so also one of the things that's suggested is that you begin a scrapbook from the moment that you get the child, or even if it is an open adoption, a uh, disclosed adoption, from the time that you meet the birth mother and you're taking photographs of the birth mother and you, you're keeping a record of everything. So there is a scrapbook, just like you would with a child who's born to you, like your pregnancy and going to antenatal classes. You've got a history for this child. Because, you know, when you're young, you kind of, tell me what I was like when I was three or what happened when I was born or what, you know, what kind of baby was I? And you've got a history so that the child forms and I repeat, concretizes their identity mm -hmm. and they feel as if they are as important and belong to a family and they have a different family as well. They have a different biological parenting that, that, they were, that they've come into the world with. Okay. Well, Dr. Eve, you also mentioned now there are two different yes. types of adoptions. Now, when we That's get right, back, so we're going to have to pause this conversation again. Yes. But I would love to know about the different adoptions sure. where you said the mother has um, consent. Is that the right word? No, yes. Makes an agreement. Yeah. She makes an agreement. Well, we'll pick up on that with Dr. Eve shortly. But our lines are open if you'd love to join our conversation. It's 021-4309-881. It's my feel-good show.
welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso. It's Monday morning and we are talking relationships with Dr. Eve in particular, putting the spotlight on adoption. Mm -hmm. Now we're asking all the questions. Are you going through the process? Are you perhaps adopted? We would mm -hmm. love to hear from you. Our lines are open. It's 021-430-9881. And I believe we have a caller on the line. Good mm. morning. Jenny from Johannesburg. Good morning. Hi, Jenny. Good morning to all of you on Expresso. Hi, Jenny. What's your comment Hi. or your question? I adopted a daughter when she, I got her at four months and adopted her legally when she was two. And from the day that I legally adopted her, I used to tell everybody when I introduced her, this is my daughter, gave her name and said that she was adopted. Mm -hmm. So she grew up knowing she was adopted. She never queried it until she got older and then asked, uh, mommy, what does adopted mean? Yeah. I explained to her what it meant, mm. and she wanted to know about her mother, which ob obviously I knew something about her, but I didn't know where she was. The mother did trace her through Facebook a couple of years later, mm. um, but they didn't build up um, any relationship whatsoever. And from the word go, she told her mom, look, you gave birth to me, but this is my actual mother. She mm. raised me. She gave me the love. Mm. She gave me the upbringing, which I think um, for any mother, it's wonderful to hear things like oh, this. Goodness. And mm. today we've got such a close bond. We live together. Mm. We do everything for one another. And it's the best experience mm. Anybody can have in the world. Oh, goodness, Jenny. Uh, thank you for being so vulnerable with us this morning. Uh, it's got to be a very taut and difficult situation when your adopted child wants to go and seek out their biological parents because you think at that time, am I going to be rejected for the biological parents or for yeah. the birth mother? And I want to compliment you and praise you for letting her go through that process, which everybody should be allowed to go through, to find their biological parents, mm -hmm. knowing that they will come back to you because you have raised them. And obviously you've done great, Jenny. Uh, but it is absolutely important for a child to be able to do the training. Isn't that interesting what Facebook does? Yeah, it's really <laughs> good for some things. Thanks, Mark. It's good for some things. <laughs> if we were to just maybe swing it a little bit back, because sure. now we talk about... Um, as a couple or as yeah. a parent, allowing that child to go through that process. Yes. Before then, there's the two distinctive exactly. differences. There's the different dis types. Was it disclosed and undisclosed adoption? Exactly. So disclosed is then the open one, where it could be a step parent because you have a child, as I said earlier, and then you, obviously you know who the stepfather is and he wants to now adopt you. Yes. But it also it may be because you know the birth mother or you have found a birth mother and you've gone into agreement, a lot of legal contracting around that. Mm -hmm and that you then have an open relationship. The child can always have contact with the birth mother, knowing the child needs to know. You're never going to go back to that birth mother. Once the birth mother has signed that paper, she has no claim on you whatsoever, but she can have a relationship. You know who she is, and you as the, the new adoptive parent can say, I know who your birth mother is, and if you're ready to meet her, then I have the details, or I've kept you in contact yes. with her. And I want, so the second, and we'll talk about the TV show just now, but the second one is the non-disclosed or the closed adoption, where you just never, ever know. The parent signs off, and that's it. You have absolutely no access. She has no right to the child, and you never know who she is. And it sounds like Jenny had that. Yeah. She didn't know where the mother was. She didn't have any contact with that mother. And the child then had to go and search. And it's mm. a big search. It has to be done sure. to actually find. And then to go through the trauma of having to meet or not meet with the birth mother may say, I don't want to be... You know, I'm just thinking as I'm talking, why do we talk about birth mothers, not birth fathers? Why are fathers Can, absent yeah, today? That, that, I guess that's just the supposition of a society today? that we live in that, you know, this fathers don't play as big a role exactly. in, in parenting and, you know, yeah. equally as a father, and you, a you're a parent. Wants to know, you're a, a child parent. wants to know right. the, fa the father as well. Yes. I think yeah. we have time for one more segment Let's later on. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I've just been told we don't. Uh, but Oh, goodbye. Ah, so long. Goodness. Farewell. All right. uh, we'll do this again. But, of course, if you'd like to engage with Dr. Eve yeah. on this topic, at dr underscore Eve on social media. She's very open and uh, replies quite uh, responsibly and very quickly. Very savvy. Tech savvy. Uh, tech savvy <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah, uh, so and thank Instagram. You very much. Instagram. All of those. But thank yeah. you very much for all the calls, yes. all the questions and the stories you shared with us. And as always, thanks, babe.